Popo's Bizarre Adventures, y'all. So the IRS audits the poor at five times the rate of everyone else. This is um, the uh, the records clearinghouse at uh, the transactional records clearinghouse at Syracuse University did an analysis of IRS data. Um, essentially, what they found was that for tax returns le earning less than twenty five thousand dollars per year. Out of a thousand, 13 would be audited. So 13 out of a thousand uh, um, returns that are less than $25,000 a year earnings are audited. Compare that with incomes above $25,000. That is a rate of 2.6 per 1,000. So that's five times the rate of everyone else. If you are broke, poor in this country, like straight up broke, right? This is poverty territory. If you're poor, you're getting audited by the IRS five times as much as anybody else. And I consider that police, uh, police action as far as anything else. Um, they, they call it correspondence audits because they tend to use letters more than they do um, physical face-to-face -face visits. But still, it's some bullshit. Um, I literally can't file taxes for my dad right now because his state ID is expired and he'd have to have either street address bills or a paycheck to prove his address. So he literally can't get an ID. So he literally can't file his taxes. That sounds about right, Rev. That sounds about right. Um... So just right out of the gate. Yes, punished because poor. That's that's super common in our country. So right out of the gate, let's just start with the IRS. Now, moving on, there's a video attached to our next story. Some of you had to have seen it. Um, oh, that's right, that's age gated. And what I wanted to do was um, that. Okay, we'll do that right there. Um, so, next up, next up, Tulsa. Oh, Tulsa, 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 Tulsa. Um, so, Monday, I think, yeah, last Monday, um, some footage got posted to Facebook um, f uh, Monday night showing a Tulsa police officer rattling a locked door and laughing as she attempts to persuade a, a 70 year old woman uh, to come out of a restroom. She's locked herself in. And so it, let's just say it, it's oh God. Okay. So Ronnie Cor Cor uh, Corachia, mm, I don't know. Either way, that's the arresting officer that is listed on the paperwork. Um, so, ah, uh, they're attempting to take a woman by the name of LaDonna June Paris into custody. Um, so here we go. Let's just, you know, on, on the grand scheme of things, like I can actually show this video. Um, it's, it's surprising that I can actually show a video attached to some of these stories on Twitch. Um, but I can with this one. You can hear. You want to get tased? Yeah, then come out. You want to get tased? Don't do it. This is going to be so fun. Want to change something? We have a we have like a crisis team, but they're busy right now. They like handle it, but like mental health. It's like mental health specialist, therapist. She just keeps rambling. 
And CRT is busy, of course. She is mental as all. Well. Yeah. If she opens that door, my hands are going. You want to get tased? Yeah, they come out. You want to get tased? Don't do it. <laughs> I love my job. Oh, we were just having a fucking buffer. We were just having a uh, a bit rate drop. That's I just paused it really quickly. Quaker Oats, thanks for the follow. Oh, don't let the... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Don't let this represent all cops. See, this is a fun thing, D, uh, DRXP. I do a segment called Popo's Bizarre Adventures, where I document malfeasance amongst the police officers of this nation and abroad every week. Every week. And you know what? It's always a fucking shit show. 20 a week. I can get no problem. No problem. Without even trying. So here's the thing. I've done the numbers. I've done the statistical analysis. I've written the essays on police violence in America and violence towards police in America. I have those numbers as well. Um, and I do a, seg a recurring segment where we look at the abuses of police Here's the, th here, oh, and I've written um, historical, uh, historical slash contemporary analysis essays um, that on the origins of and problems with modern policing. This is a topic I'm intimately familiar with. My stepfather was a, uh, was a judge. I have lots of like federal law enforcement in my family and that sort of thing. I am, I'm actually really well versed in this topic. Uh, this is a systemic issue. This is all cops. Um, the good cops get run out of the police organizations. They, w the whistleblowers, either end up dead or threatened to be killed. Um, almost always, uh, I would say more often than not, but almost always. There's very few instances of when they get pr uh, they get protected. Um, so yeah, uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news on this one, but this is an all cops problem. Because the very system they operate under is a system of coercion and oppression and monopolized force uh, at the hands of the state to control a populace. So, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, all cops are bastards. And the good ones, they don't remain cops very long. The smart ones don't get into the police force at all. Cops are professional class traders, says Carpe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, so good luck with that. Good luck with that. Anyway, back to the shit, shit human being. No, you don't get to tell me what to do. That's not how this works. Okay. Yes. The cops are trying to kill me. You. Can you believe this kind of thing's happening? <laughs> She's so 85. Can you believe this kind of thing's happening? <laughs> She's so 85. <laughs> And the door is locked. Acknowledging um, she needs mental health treatment. To knock it down, yeah, I don't care. You need to come out. But she's very 85. I asked for CRT. Don't Google, but use DuckDuckGo. I don't know. I really hope it is Ritter because I really like the way he works. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to pound the door open and spray her. I really like the way he works. He's going to pound this door open and spray her. This going to be so fun. A big one. Yep. Here we go. Oh. Woo! 70 year old woman. Ah. 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 I need you, Rufus. I need you, Rufus. I need you, Rufus. Oh, she's LH. Uh -huh. oh, what are you doing that to me? Cass, I need my son Cass. I need my son Stop it. LH. 
All right, stop it. Stop it. You're hurting me. Okay. I'll I'm sure they are. Go. I don't mind. I don't mind. Stop it. Ah, I'm sure they are. Give us your own. Ah, now. Ah, ah. Oh. Boy, it's my shepherd. It's my boy. You need to lie down. You need to be a lie down. You need to be a lie down. You need to be a lie down. Sure, they should be some mercy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a cron. Get your hands on my pants. Okay. That is so nasty. Yeah, this was unnecessary. You're right. You're we didn't right. have to do any of this. And I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. She's right. apologizing to them Let's now. She is bleeding yeah, right. everywhere, and she just wants to clean up the blood. No, he is bleeding. Do not kick his center. LH. Starlight, I had to pull that. I understand. Yep. Get up. Thank you. Thank you. She's thanking them. I said sit down. Sit down. I will. I will. Okay. You're hurting me. Please. Please don't hurt me. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, God. Oh, God. Just relax. Shiva. Do you know Shiva? LaDonna. Of the English? LaDonna. Yeah, you're yeah. arrested right now. We I'm have to do. You're arrested. Why? What have I done? Arson. What? Me? Try to light us on oh, fire. I would never do that. I'm a woman of the God. Okay. She's a bipolar having manic episodes, but she's AN04, so we couldn't make her do anything. Okay. So we called you guys for assistance, and then she just took off. Took off? And, you know, okay. It, you, there wasn't any really grounds to do anything. Gotcha. But this um. Is, I mean, what do you guys got going on right now? So she was in the bathroom for five hours. They asked her to leave. She said no. Then we asked her to leave. She said no, and we had to oh, look. force into the they bathroom. They lied to then her too. From here. She tried to set the bathroom on fire. She had a lighter with like the spray. Yeah, she had a lighter with the spray, like spraying oh, it. Who would have guessed? They us. attempted to cover so she cover up. To go to jail now for probably arson trespassing, obstruction, because she wouldn't leave, resisting, all that stuff. So, yeah, that's that's where we're at now, so. I don't know what you, like, if you're going to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. I'm just, I'm over it. And that is how you know there's a systemic issue. Hey, DRXP or whatever the fuck your name was. How do you explain the all the charges being dismissed? How do you explain the solitary confinement for a month in county jail? How do you explain the lack of mental health treatment? It's not just the cops at the scene. Clearly, county's in on it. Clearly, the court system's in on it. Clearly, the DA's in on it. Yeah, it's a big... Big fuck Tulsa, Tulsa. By the way, it's not a big city. It's just Tulsa. How do you explain all that? That seems like a systemic issue, not just a couple of cops. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, so there's Ladonna Paris being beat the fuck up in the middle of a, you know. Br Mental illness break. Uh, hey, Ace. Ace is back. Uh, image. Where's my copy address? There's my copy address. Nope. That's not my copy address. There we go. Is that fire? Oh. Uh, so, the next story, again, remember, don't, don't let this, this singular officer <clears throat> color cops for you, even though we'll be bouncing around the country and showing a multitude of examples, um, and we do this every week, and every week it generally takes us, what, two to four hours to cover these stories? There's so many of them in a singular week. Um, but don't worry, there's not that many issues. So the state of Georgia has 
reached a um, a four point eight million dollar uh, settlement. Um, is that yeah? There we go. Okay, so. The state of Georgia has reached a $4.8 million settlement. The, the gentleman on the left is a, um, a, a former state police officer by the name of Jacob Thompson. Now, the gentleman who's actually a gentleman is on the right. His name is Julian Lewis, or, well, to spoil the story, I suppose... Um, his name was Julian Lewis. So our, our <clears throat> friendly officer here claimed that he was attempting to pull Mr. Lewis over for a, uh, alleged broken taillight. Now that's the thing. We don't have any evidence for that broken taillight, but he has a um, he he claims that he was allegedly uh, pull, tr- attempting to pull Mr. Lewis over for a broken taillight while Mr. Lewis was on the way to the store to buy his wife a soda. Um, he did not immediately stop on the bumfuck road. He did what is recommended, by the way. Uh, by uh, 911 and police agencies around this country, if you are uncertain about a police stop, that you pull over to a more familiar area, a well-lit area, a place with more people. It's a practice commonly taught to people who may feel vulnerable in isolated areas um, where there is no one there to witness potential events. The police themselves actually instruct individuals to do this. It is speculated that this is what Mr. Lewis was attempting to do. Um, Lewis activated both turn signals. He put on his hazards in recognition of the um, former state trooper here. Um, The trooper then decided why, oh yes, Carpe, very much. Um, the trooper then decided that this was seen, to be seen as an act of defiance, I suppose, and an illegal act unto itself. And so he then crashed his, uh, his, his car into Mr. Lewis's car using a pit maneuver um, and with enough force at enough speed to spin Lewis's car in the opposite direction. And less than two seconds passed from the time that the trooper opened the door to his vehicle and fired a shot, killing Lewis instantly. 60 years old. He looks good for 60, by the way. Um, probably would have lived to like a thousand. Yes. So when he didn't immediately pull over, he pit maneuvered him. And this is according to the GBI's Georgia Bureau of Investigations own investigator's testimony. This isn't defense. This is the Georgia Bureau of Investigation's own findings. Less than two seconds passed from the time that the officer opened the door to his vehicle to the time that the shot was fired that killed Mr. Lewis instantly. So, yeah. The officer claimed that he heard Lewis's engine revving to a high rate, to a high RPM, and feared for his life after the pit maneuver. Um, here's the fun part. After further investigation, neither taillight on Lewis's car was in a condition of inoperability that would lead to justifiable cause for the stop. And, 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 and mechanics found that the impact of the pit maneuver made it impossible for Lewis's car to rev. (laughs) 
So, our officer here lied about his justifiable cause, attacked a random civilian just running, just driving down the street trying to get his wife some fucking uh, soda, slammed his car into it, spun him around, hopped out of his car, and executed him. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. There's no body cam because he wasn't wearing a fucking body cam. In fact... Georgia officials refused to release the patrol car dash cam footage of the incident whatsoever uh, in absolute uh, in totality. No, Carpe, they refused to release the dash cam footage. So, the settlement was done by Hall and Lampros. Hall and Lampros are these like crazy fucking civil rights attorneys. It's it's a firm that handles personal injury and civil rights lawsuits. And that's what they do. They're spe- they specialize in it. So they are um, they uh, they they have the largest uh, um, um, tort settlements in Georgia history. Like these these fuckers are responsible essentially for the maximum amount in Georgia. Like they 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 will hit you for the maximum amount, and they're good at it too. So they uh, they handled that. $4.8 million settlement to the widow of uh, Julian Lewis. Um, but opacity is guilt. It is. If, if you refuse to be transparent, if you go opaque on this, then 100%. Um, let me get you a, a, a Breen. I, I saw it go. Um There you go. Um, yes. Mr. Lewis was extrajudicially, summarily executed by a state official. Uh, oh, Ace, I'm sorry. Today's the anniversary of my brother's murder by a cop, says Ace. I left for the candlelight vigil we hold yearly. Three years he's been gone, all for being a black man in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yep. 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 Black wall driving. Black wall driving. (sighs) So... A jury, not all cops, right? But a jury in uh, in Arizona is going to have to decide whether a former police officer used excessive force when he shot a man in the testicles with his taser as his two minor children stood by watching and crying. This is a federal judge who has ruled because uh, he has unsealed it uh, last Wednesday, he has ruled because they, t- they, the officer and his defense attempted to claim qualified immunity. Uh, Glazy, we're kind of doing that. Each each post bizarre adventure has all the links attached. So every video that I cut uh, that I do this in, the the links are below the video. So func- functionally, we are creating a giant list. Yes. Um. Yes, they they attempted to uh, uh, argue that the officer should have qualified immunity for uh, because he didn't know he wasn't supposed to shoot a dude in the balls with his taser repeatedly when he was handcuffed following a traffic stop. Oh, that's right. Did I forget to mention the individual in question here? He did a minor traffic stop, dragged him out of, his, out of his car, handcuffed him, and then tased him in the balls repeatedly. And then they put the fucking shitty DA and the bullshit court system surrounding it, put him in jail for months for resisting arrest. Wait for it. Before all charges were dismissed. So, 
also... Oh, dig, the wind is insane, isn't it? He approached this man, he approached the man and his wife, um, Johnny Wheatcroft, by the way. Um, the officer, we should always name check, always name check, Matthew Schneider, um, the piece of shit officer for Glendale, Arizona, named Matthew Schneider, um, assaulted Johnny Wheatcroft in the parking lot of a Motel 6. Essentially, he and his wife were already parked in the motel parking lot when bullshit officer Schneider fucking pulled up and said that he failed to signal to turn. Probably bullshit, seeing as we don't have any video evidence of that either. Uh, he failed to signal when turning into the parking lot. Wheatcroft told the officer he did nothing wrong and refused to provide ID. Schneider said he'd take Wheatcroft to the police station. He accused him of stuffing something between the car seats and a bag between his feet, which Wheatcroft denied. Schneider then opened the passenger door, placed his taser on Wheatcroft's shoulder, and told Schneider to relax his arm and stop tensing up. This is when Schneider used his taser on Wheatcroft 11 times. We, uh, we do have the body cam footage, at least the court did. We don't have it. But body cam footage shows Wheatcroft lying face down on the pavement with his shorts pulled down while Schneider deploys his taser, quote, in an area that appears to be close to Wheatcroft's genitals while the man's children can be seen in frame and heard screaming and crying, no daddy, no. He, um, Officer Schneider, of course, was put on paid vacation for uh, three days following the incident. Um, <laughs> the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, of course, refused, uh, they declined to press charges against the officer. Um, after the police body camera footage was <clears throat> finally gotten uh, gotten by attorneys in 2020, the case was officially reopened, and that's when the state attorney general's office charged Snyder, who was retired from the force with a pension at that point. But in Wheatcroft's civil suit against the city, Glendale argued that its officers were entitled to qualified immunity. U.S. District Court Judge uh, Michael Liberty said, no, no, <laughs> you do not get qualified immunity for tasing a dude 11 times in the balls for a made up traffic stop. That's not how qualified immunity works. So he, um, the claims of excessive force, civil rights violations, intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress will move forward. And the judge concluded that a jury will be allowed to decide if Wheatcroft was or was not resisting arrest and whether Schneider's use of the taser was justified. Um, so this is, this is the judge's own writing, by the way. This is the judge's own writing. So if you wonder which way this is going to go. Under the version of facts, as told by plaintiffs, Wheatcroft ordered no, uh, offered no resistance to the officers. The video of the incident reflect Wheatcroft verbally telling officers he is not resisting. Liberty found Wheatcroft's deposition testimony provides additional evidence that a jury could rely on to conclude he was not resisting. So... Yeah, in before the jury's full of cop lovers. I know, right? Well, they're not all bad. Um, so qualified immunity struck down for, um, tasing a dude in the balls 11 times. Hmm, interesting. Who would have guessed? Um, this, this decision, uh, Thompson v. Clark is a good decision, but it still leaves a bunch of barriers in place. I'm going to move on to the Supreme Court. Um, last Monday, the Supreme Court made it easier to sue police and prosecutors for malicious, malicious prosecution. There's other um, cases in the way. Uh, or there's other um, barriers to pr uh, prevent such lawsuits still in the way. But this is kind of the, 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 the hilarity of it. This is, this is the psychotic nature of it. This is the abuse of the system. Um, the case is... Um, the, the, the Thompson v. Clark case centers around a diaper rash. 
Now, for those of you that understand and follow cop stories in America, like the dude in Florida, the gentleman who was pulled over and had um, donut glaze in his um, in his like passenger seat from eating donuts on the go, and they fucking field tested it positive for methamphetamine and threw him in jail for a bunch of months and fucking kept it on his record. He's still fighting to get that record expunged, by the way. Um, yeah, this is this is a thing when a non-issue becomes a very big fucking issue. Diaper rash is at the center of the, uh, the Thompson v. Clark case. Um, Larry Thompson was living with his uh, then fiance, now wife, they married, but they had a newborn baby when his sister-in-law, <clears throat> apparently suffering from, let's call it mental illness, called 911, claiming that Thompson was abusing his baby. When EMT and officers arrived, they were admitted to the apartment by the sister-in-law, who arguably doesn't have rights to do that. Uh, but Thompson, who was unaware at that time of his sister-in-law's actions calling 911, told them they must have the wrong address. The EMT officers left, but returned to the apartment then with four New York City police officers. And NYPD is just some of the most stand-up individuals in the world. We all know that, right, guys? NYPD is some of the most reasonable, sane, rational, de-escalating, non-violent individuals in the world. It's not like there's ever been a movie about them trying to execute their own cops when, uh, when they attempt to whistleblow on them. Oh, wait, there is. It's called Serpico. Um, so, yeah. You can you can see where um, where this is headed right away. Ah, this time Thompson answered the door and refused to admit them unless they had a search warrant. Come back with a fucking warrant. The police then did what NYPD does. They threw Thompson on the floor and handcuffed him while the EMT examined the baby. Um, <laughs> thank you, Buck the Trend friend. Um, <clears throat> what? Mm. Um, they threw uh, the uh, the police threw him to the ground, handcuffed him while the EMTs examined the baby. The only marks found on the baby were diaper rash. The baby was taken out of their custody to the hospital for further examination, where the diaper rash diagnosis was confirmed. Dun, dun. Thompson, though, Thompson was thrown in jail for two days and charged with resisting arrest and obstructing governmental administration. Again, again, guys, guys, it's only a couple of bad apples. I don't know what you guys are talking about all the time, about how all the cops and the whole system is corrupt and bad, facilitating the abuses that are occurring on, uh, on the individual level such as these. I don't know what you guys are going on about. Anyway, so he was, um, he was charged with resisting arrest and obstructing governmental uh, administration. Now, eventually... Prosecutors tried to offer him a deal in which his record would eventually be wiped clean, but Thompson refused. Uh, no, I know. A few, a few bad apples spoiled the bunch. I know, Omicron. Um, he refused, and prosecutors subsequently dropped all charges. So for you pointing out that diaper rash can get pretty bad, like bleeding, apparently it wasn't bad enough because no child abuse or neglect charges were ever filed whatsoever. And the only charges were, again, resisting arrest and obstructing governmental administration. And all charges were dropped. So, hmm... It seems like this is a classic case of malicious prosecution. So, the New York State Appeals Court actually found that Thompson had to prove his innocence, that his innocence had, uh, that to prove his innocence had been, quote, affirmed, okay? So, the dropping of charges wasn't explanation enough. The fact that they just said, we're not, we're not touching this. Uh, was not an affirmation of his innocence. Well, too bad. 
on Monday, our bullshit Supreme Court, the fucking with fucking beer bro and rapey dude and fucking well okay beer bro and rapey dude could be the same guy i'm talking about terrence Cl- uh, uh, clarence thomas is the rapey dude see anita hill um so you know kavanaugh rapey dude thompson uh, uh thomas rapey dude fucking you know t- take your pick either way our idiot supreme court even a beer bro and the other rapey dude yeah i know right like there's there's more than one rapey dude on the supreme court um either way even and trad wife, yes, <laughs> fucking beer bro, the other rapey dude, and trad wife. Um, we didn't elect them, Wither. No, those aren't elected representatives. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the Supreme Court sided with Thompson six three. So many rapey dudes. Um, the vote was six three. They decided that he um, did not have to do. Uh, uh, he did not have to show an affirmative indication of innocence for to of, to prove malicious prosecution. Um, here's the crazy shit. You want to know who the the majority was? The six the six against the three. John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett joined the other three liberal judges in this decision. Yeah, this is this is actually an across the aisle fucking decision. Both sides were like, no, that's not how this works. So beer bro. Beer bro wrote the majority opinion. He declared, um, he, 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 in his written opinion, he declared that a plaintiff need only show that the prosecution ended without a conviction and that Thompson did that. This is, according to Georgetown law professor, Mary McCord, dude, she straight up said, this is a welcome development. This allows police and prosecutors to be held accountable for when they do something wrong. This is, this is a big deal. This is actually a huge fucking deal for us that, uh, like we can start suing prosecutors and cops for these these malicious prosecutions when they drop all these charges like we pointed out earlier with the previous one that they they just fucking drop the charges and all of a sudden you're like that is now equivalent to an uh to an affirmation of innocence that's that's an uh, that is equivalent supreme court decision that is an equivalent to an affirmation of um uh, of uh, an affirmative indication of innocence and so if you can show that you were kept in fucking county for two months and blah, 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 they're fucked. You can actually sue now. That will bypass night, punk. What good cops? The good cops get run out and they get killed or threatened or raped or run out of town or state or country in some instance. What, what good cops? There's literal movies about this. Even Hollywood has made movies about this. So fucking Serpico even talked about this. Like, Jesus Christ, there are no good cops. They get run out. So this is a big fucking deal. Like, the Thompson v. Clark decision um, is a... This could change the, the, the landscape a little bit. Not every case, not all cases... But some of them, especially when they do those uh, trumped up bullshit fucking uh, um, counts. So. No, no, you're participating in a system of coercion, oppression and corruption that is uh, designed to maintain the status quo of a ruling class. They are fundamentally class traders at a base level. They were born of labor breaking and slave patrols. There is an unbroken chain between that origin in this country and today's modern policing. They are over militarized. They are purposely trained to be hyper aggressive, violent, and escalatory uh, escalatory agents within that system. They are still used to disrupt labor practices, uh, marginalized communities, uh, people of color activities, that sort of thing. They are useful infiltration in uh, in leftist organizations and in general. No, no, there is, there's, no. It's about a systemic issue. And they're coddled authority junkies, yes. Yeah, um, I have done, I have done 
so much writing and essay and segment work on the origins of and problems with modern policing, um, how we still have legal codified slavery, how the police are an agent of that system, how they are born of union breaking and slave patrols, and none of that has ever changed, how they are agents of a system that attempt to disrupt anti-war activities and the black community. Um, no, no, they're not. No. That's, that's like a, a good a good cell trapped within a cancer of cluster, a, a cluster of cancer. Um, you're like, but there's a good cell in there. Don't worry. It will be cancer soon too. That's just the way it works. Oh yeah, they're very much taught predator prey minds. Again, we've done this, we've covered this so many times. Go, you can go watch my YouTube channel, The Origins of and Problem with Modern Policing. Um, you can go watch um, a fucking uh, my um, how to um, police officer fatalities or how to control a populace using lies and force. You can look at the tent poles essay I've done. I've, t I've covered this so many fucking times. No, not for a second. Um, it's actually born of England. Um, but I will show you, uh, police in any location, uh, on the planet are class traders. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you any, you pull, pull a country for example, and we'll, we'll pull up police abuses. We'll show how a hierarchical organization that has a monopolization of force, uh, granted to them by the state is ripe for corruption and abuse. Take your pick. It's a fundamentally flawed uh, um, agency on a global scale. Anyway, so next up. Nebraska. Oh, hang on. Let's just start doing them. <clears throat> Nebraska police officer charged with sexual child sexual assault. Nebraska uh, police officer accused of stealing guns. Let's see, yeah, fucking, oh, more, more sexual assault, more child sexual assault, more, oh, murder with a fucking car, um, oh, a, a tryst, <laughs> that was rape of uh, prisoners in a jail, uh, this is Nebraska, by the way, DRXP, um, yes, it doesn't matter what location you find yourself in, anyway, oh, do we have the video? I need the video of this one because I had the video. Let's see. Uh, cop watch. It's been a minute. It'd be before that. Um. Okay, I don't have it. Interesting. Oh, I'm being tagged somewhere. Interesting. Thank you, Cupcake. Thank you, Cupcake, as always. Anyway, so, um, ah, yes. Wait, there's the recording. Got it. Ah, yes, this was okay. Done. That's why I didn't have it because it's on Facebook and Facebook is utter garbage. You will. All right. So. So in Tennessee, a police officer, um, <clears throat> College Dale police officer, gentleman by the name of Evan Driscoll. We'll be seeing him shortly. Evan Driscoll pulled over uh, another um, man just trying to go about his day and work uh, as a DoorDash driver. He's just delivering food for bougie clientele. That's all he's doing. Now, Officer Driscoll claims that 
on his arrest record, the man, uh, uh, Mr. Gordon, became argumentative while denying he was speeding, refused to hand over his identifying information, demanding to see a supervisor, and staying in his car when ordered out. The driver, who is facing charges of speeding, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct based on the officer's sworn affidavit, pressed record on his phone after he was pulled over. The recording, well... Let me tell you, get he out. said he pulled me over for a traffic stop and he's going to taste me. You can't do that, officer, because I call for your get supervisor. Out. I have my get license. Out. What is the you reason I'm getting out? You refusing to give your information. I, told you I didn't refuse. I asked now you're resisting. I you're refusing to give your information. Anybody want to... Um, <clears throat> I haven't get refused. Out. I asked to speak to your supervisor. Get out. <clears throat> Sir, I feel get uncomfortable. Out. Please get your supervisor. I don't give a shit Please what don't you touch me. Like. I said get out. Please stop it. Why are you being like this? Is this is how y'all really are? Please stop. Uh, this get is out. all on tape. Please stop. Get out of the car. Please don't hurt me. Why are get you doing out. this? No, sir. I'm telling you get out. I'm, I'm telling you that this is not lawful. Ah! Oh my God, Get that's out. not lawful, Get sir. Get out! That's not lawful. Get out! So the entire thing is predicated upon the fact that he refused to give his information even though he had his information clearly in his hand. He had his driver's license in his hand. He would have given it to him. But the fact of the matter is the officer is so out of fucking check already and so ridiculous that he asked to speak to a supervisor, which, by the way, is a perfectly legal and acceptable thing to do with an officer in the field. They are instructed to back off, maintain distance, and ensure that you cannot flee the scene. That is it while waiting for a supervisor. So he asked to speak to his supervisor. He had his ID at the ready. The officer refused to take it. All cops are idiots, man. We screen them by IQ. New York even had a lawsuit about it. If you're too smart, you don't get to be a cop. That's literally a screener in this country. All cops are idiots. They're all dummies. If you ask too many questions, they don't want you. Yeah. Welcome to the U.S. policing system. Dude had to sue over that shit. <sighs> so he... um. <clears throat> Obedient class traitors. Yep. So, you know, he swore in an affidavit that, in fact, what had occurred was X, and then video evidence was released of Y. Imagine that. A cop lying on an affidavit, on an arrest record. Who would have thought that's a thing? Oh, wait. They all do that. They all do that. At some point in their career, every cop will lie on an arrest record. So this happened a minute ago and this is my this is my favorite from last week that we that we collected right this is this is one of my just absolute favorites So made a video about that says Carpe we write the reports was mentioned Oh, it's almost like, um, oh, I don't know. He's a narcissistic pathological maniac who has an authority uh, addiction and fundamentally is a violent human being that has been empowered by the state. Huh, interesting. Anyway, so I love this. I love this video. This video is great. This video shows exactly what's up. So a hotel, uh, a hotel clerk is working the night shift and he is working the front desk and a white patron comes in and starts screaming racial epithets at the black man is completely unruly is starting to knock stuff off of like the desk and stuff like that uh, off of one of the tables and stuff and generally misbehaving in the hotel lobby. So the, um, the hotel clerk, does what any upstanding citizen would do in this situation. He dialed 911 and he called for police reinforcement. That's where things got worse. Tonight, police.
police body camera video reveals a shocking new angle of a hotel brawl in Florida. The video, released by the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, shows officers yelling and pushing a black hotel employee before arresting him, even though that employee, Raymond Rashal, was the one to call the police in the first place. Previously released surveillance footage of the incident at a Best Western shows 28-year-old Rashal working at the lobby desk when a man charges past the front desk barrier towards him. Rashal punches the man, Jason Rabe, multiple times before putting him in a headlock and holds him down while 911 was called. According to the incident report from the police, Rashal said the man refused to leave the hotel. Rashal told CBS's Miami affiliate that he canceled Rabe's stay because Rabe, who is white, was making racial slurs towards him. We reached out to Rashal for comment but have not heard back. In the incident report obtained by NBC News, when police responded to the scene, Rashal was hostile and refused to back up. The officer reporting he pushed Rashal back before Rashal, quote, placed his hands on my upper torso and pushed me. It does not appear Rashal pushed the officer from the footage reviewed by NBC News. And you didn't help Rashal was taken into custody. Oh, look! And with more lying cops, everyone! An officer with violence. Only in another state this drop. time. The incident report also states the guest, Jason Rabe of New York, was, quote, obviously drunk, uneasy on his feet, and slurring his words. Um, um, <clears throat> racist, violent white man still wandering around. But calm and tried to explain that Rashal had canceled his reservation. Surveillance video shows police escorting Rabe out of the hotel. The incident reports saying he was cited for trespassing before getting a courtesy ride to a friend's house. So, do we still have our bootlickers here? So again, someone attempting to do the legal proper procedure engages with the police and finds himself literally abused, beaten and arrested and then falsely charged by the police and the system supports it. And oh, by the way, what happened? Then the racist, violent white dude got a courtesy ride home. So, want to defend this one now? Would you would you like to defend this one as well? Yes, it is, Gus. It really is. Oh, wait. Is that um which one is that that said that? Let's see, that would be, that's the other one. Oh, that's a follower of, oh, Scott and Stick 666 and, oh, yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, yes, so the police, once again, lied on their paperwork, in their report, charged him wrongfully, um, no, you didn't. You have more guns than you do. Uh, you did after the 96, uh, port, uh, port, uh, shooting incident, Gus, you actually, you guys actually have more guns now than you did in 1996. Just FYI. Um, you didn't get rid of guns. That's just a falsity that fucking Aussies online like to tell other people. It's just not true. Um, Port Arthur. Thank you. Yeah. I always forget the Arthur. I, I fucking, it's always named after a king. No, you have more guns than you had in 1996. Pay attention to the words that are coming in my mouth. I know it's, it sounds weird to you because you got that Aussie dialect shit. You, Australia, have more guns in your country today than you did in 1996 after the Port Arthur incident. We have more guns than everybody. That's not a competition. We'll bury you in our guns. That's not even up for discussion. We have more guns than people in this country. We have more people than you by a long shot. You have more guns now than you did in 96. 
So. They only understand kangaroo-based metaphors. Ah, can I turn that into a kangaroo-based metaphor? Like Canadians, we like to pretend we don't have any, too. Anyone who believes this is making a serious mistake is Cheshire. Use the emu wars. Here's the report. Would you like the link so you can go read it yourself from the Australia Institute? Because that's all the Sydney Morning Herald was reporting on, was a left-leaning think tank called the Australia Institute that released this study that showed you have more guns than you did in 1996 at the Port Arthur incident. The link is in chat. They just wanted to rub it in your face. Let's see. And um, <clears throat> the gun control expert adjunct per, uh, associate professor Philip Alper from the School of Public Health at the Faculty of Medicine and Health at the Sid, uh, University of Sydney uh, concurs with these facts as well. Australian civilians now own more than 3.5 million registered firearms, an average of four for each licensed gun owner. And uh, the purport, uh, let's see, data indicates that uh, people who already own guns have bought more rather than an increase in new, gun, uh, new owners. You, you didn't get the guns out of the hands of the people who already had them. Ah. <sighs> Uh, also, another professor uh, by the uh, name of Joel Negan, N Negan. Um, he would be head of the School of Public Health. Um, he, as well, has spoken and outlined these numbers uh, as well. Um, there's also a, a, uh, there is a uh, paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine that discusses the point further as well. Um, and that is a joint paper authored between Professor Alpers and Professor uh, Negan. So, yes. <sighs> the rate of firearms per, uh, per 100 population has risen 1.7%. So can we knock off this bullshit talking point that you're trying to promote and go back to reality? Australia has more fucking guns now than it did after the Port Arthur incident. Anyway. Whoop, there goes gravity. Anyway. 
Australians, I find, get very, very um, um, uh, emotionally and egoistically involved in it. They seem to they seem to have an identity issue tied up with it. The same way that Americans get tied up in like freedom. Like, we got freedom in this country. Don't you fucking, you goddamn fucking commie German fucking fucks. We got real freedom in this country. If you talk about the gun issue, the Australians get very, very fucking twitchy very quickly when you point out that there's some levels of hypocrisy and bullshit there. Yeah. So, you know. It's not the first time I've experienced that. It's not the first time I've experienced that. They seem to have a, a national identity, or at least some of them do, have, uh, have part of their national identity tied up in it. And so it strikes them personally when you talk about this stuff. Uh, hey, 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 don't talk bad about the commie Germans. So anyway, back to Popo's Bizarre Adventures before we were, t uh, uh, while we were uh, sliding past, changing back, Tokyo drifting. Um, <sighs> so Hillsboro, um, this is Tampa, it's Tampa Bay Times. So this is Her Hillsboro. This is Florida. This is Florida. Um. This one, actually, there seems to be um, nationalism. <laughs> this one seems to be the fucking, the cops actually been charged in this one. Shock. Shock, I know. Um, this guy by the name of Deputy Daniel L. Hernandez. Uh, Dale Mabry Highway. This dude was speeding down the fucking highway. And, I mean, he was moving at a clip. When I say he was speeding, he was speeding. It was a 45 mile per hour zone. He was driving 109 miles per hour. No, he wasn't in his cruiser. Okay? He was, yeah, he was, he was moving. He was in his Mustang. He actually, um, yeah, the professors didn't control for those numbers and the population growth. No, they didn't control at all for that. Homie, read the fucking study and then come back. Until then, shut the fuck up. We're trying to do something. The the adults are talking, Gus Face. Feel free, feel free to go sit at the kiddies' table until then. No, no. The pair of professors who have studied this from your own University of Sydney had not, not at all controlled for those numbers. You're right. Now move aside and let us finish what we were doing. God, Australia's uh, Aussies are fucking weird about this shit. America is fucked up. We agree. So is Australia. Pivot harder. Move on. Anyway. Fucking Aussies just think Australia is perfect. That's all. They're fucking idiots. What are you going to do? It's like all of the Brit British descendants. We're, we're all fucked up. Only some of them think they're perfect. Anyway, don't you have an aboriginal to go genocide? Even further to, to, the, to this day. Don't you have some sacred lands to go copper mine in? Um, any any 10,000-year-old caves and artifacts you guys want to further pay for the destruction of? Trauma children of the original dysfunctional family. Yeah, 100%. Anyway, back to what we were doing before the Aussie, de uh, Aussie decided to argue with, oh, I don't know their own professors. Anyway, um, so the officer that was driving at 109 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone in his Mustang crashed into the fucking Nissan Murano of a 65 year old driver by the name of Krista Richter. She was killed instantly and her husband was very seriously injured. Um, the police officer, uh, <clears throat> Officer Hernandez, was, um, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, but Gus, I'm an anarchist. I didn't give a shit about Trump to start with. Anyway, um, 
the police officer was challenging another vehicle to a street race at an intersection. He literally pulled up to the fucking, uh, to the intersection and vroom, vroom, baby. And fucking pull, uh, and literally started street racing all the way up to 109 miles per hour where he struck Krista Richter's, Richter's vehicle. He, um, but don't worry, don't worry, guys. He committed vehicular uh, manslaughter while street racing. So let's see what happened to him. He was released from county jail less than an hour after posting a $9,500 bail. He 100% got to walk out of jail one hour after posting $9,200 bail. A $9,500 bail. Yeah. That, that's what happened to him. After killing someone. Yes. After, after maiming somebody and killing someone. Yeah, that's what happened to the cop. He got, he got a slap on the wrist. He'll be, he'll be back. He was, um, he was arrested on charges of vehicular homicide and reckless driving. He was released one hour after for a, on a $9,500 bail. Yeah. That's the treatment that cops get. That's what, that's the treatment that cops get in our system is that like, imagine if you or I were street racing and fucking committed vehicular manslaughter, murdered a woman and almost killed her husband while going 109 miles an hour down a main drag. They wouldn't let us out. We'd be doing, we'd be in County caboose. Um, boys will be boys. Yeah. We'd be in County for a while, for a while. Um, continuing the, the, uh, tradition, the pattern, Hey narrator. Um, Oh, good on you narrator. Good luck with it. I hope you fucking get a solid grade continuing the pattern tradition uh, and, uh, the sort of the scheme that we've got going here. Another cop who actually is okay. So he's not actually getting punished, but he's not on the force anymore. And he only put up 10% of that. Yes. Cassie, he only put up 10% of that 9,500 fucking ridiculous. So a, um, a, a, a veteran of like 46 years or some shit like that, um, it, uh, of the, um, Illinois, um, St- uh, Springfield police department in Illinois, um, retired. Well, he's, <clears throat> he resigned after what was found, um, was well all across, um, his media, social media and private messaging was, some interesting white supremacist stuff. Let's just put it that way. Um, typical, typical for what you expect. Um, he, um, one of them. Uh, this was this was published by Anonymous Comrades Collective. He got hacked, basically. Um, if I had one, if I found a genie and I had one wish, the Jews would be a distant memory in seventy-two years. That's the tip of the iceberg. That's that's the like shit I could probably say on air without having to worry about TOS uh, infringements. But they um, they have investigated uh, the, his comments and actions, and well, he was allowed to retire with pension. He's not on the force anymore, but he um, he's getting a full pension. Um, if you want to see the racist psych- psychopath that was on um, police, J uh, J Verig police so yeah that's that's our that's our special little officer aaron paul nichols they always have three names don't they um aaron paul nichols (sighs) this guy this guy. So remember two years ago? Yes. Behold the master race, dude. They're always gorgeous. Aren't they? They're always dude. The master race is always just six pack abs and fucking ripped fucking biceps. They always look amazing. Like they could just do a triathlon and then another triathlon and then a marathon. It's amazing. The shape that they're in. It's already, it's already gone. Glazy. Um, (sighs) 
So, remember a couple of years ago? Interesting. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, you probably have one of the uh, the the um, plugins installed. Do you have like Better TTV or Frankerface installed, Glazy? That that'll hold it. That'll allow you to continue seeing it. So, um, two years ago, you might remember um, a, a California police officer. Again, I mean, you know, just a couple of bad apples. Um, so. There was a there was a uh, a Rancho Cordova police officer, um, who, by the name of um, um, Brian Fowl, um, he, well, he was caught doing this. Remember when he um, tackled, straddled, and beat um, a uh, a fourteen year old boy for the suspicion of selling tobacco the suspicion of selling tobacco that's that's what happened here he suspected the 14 year old boy so you know he of course jumped on him slammed his head uh, into the fucking the ground as you can see fucking took him down on the curb by the way and then moved him over to the dirt and fucking smushed his face into the goddamn like you know gravel and shit and worked him over uh, he flipped him onto his uh, stomach so he could be handcuffed after he fucking puts his face down in the ground and holds him there he punches him three times once in the chest two in the stomach before forcefully flipping him over again So, why am I talking about a story from two years ago involving the <clears throat> officer uh, Brian Fowle where he beat a 14-year-old boy for the suspicion of selling tobacco? Because he um, appealed his termination and he's been reinstated by an independent judge within the department, ruling that his firing wasn't warranted. They gave him his job back. They gave him his job back. That's why we're talking about good old Brian Fowl here, is after he tackled a fucking 14-year-old to the ground, fucking smushed his face in the fucking ground, punched him in the chest and stomach a couple few times. He just, the department, the independent judge, the arbitrator for the department, decided that his, his termination wasn't warranted and they gave him his fucking job back. So, yeah. Yeah, I know, Wither, independent. It's fucking air quote central. It's air, air quote central, 100%. So, yeah. Uh, nope. Okay, so. Back in 2020, there was um, some protests. You might have heard about them. A small, a small thing. It was a blip on the news. It was a blip on the news. Um, something to do with somebody's lives. I forget. Either way, somebody's lives were determined to have mattered. And apparently a couple of people got a little, a little riled up about it. Um, so some, some people apparently were in the street and they had a thing or two to say about maybe the police's treatment of marginalized communities as a whole across this country. <clears throat> well, this is a picture of the Denver Police Department using a 40 mil uh, grenade launcher and, um, and various pepper, uh, pepper ball and pepper spray gear. So this, this instance is in Denver. A federal jury has awarded $14 million to protesters hit with pepper balls and a bag filled with lead, a.k.a. a bean bag, by the way. If you're ever wondering what's in a bean bag, it's, fucking a, it's a canvas bag filled with lead shot. Um, 
during those 2020 BLM George Floyd demonstrations. Okay? So the jury, federal jury, the federal jury found that the police did in fact use excessive force against the protesters. They did in fact violate their constitutional rights and ordered the city of Denver to pay the 12 people who sued them. Oh yeah, because this didn't happen in any other state stock market. You're, you argue in bad faith. You're full of shit, man. This didn't happen in any other state whatsoever. Whatsoever. Um, so yeah, this, this is, there are 29 nation, uh, national lawsuits pending, uh, challenging law enforcement use of force during the 2020 protests. And this is the first in the sort of line and a federal jury, a federal court and jury found that in fact, the Denver police did use excessive force by simply using pepper balls and a beanbag. No. I've been all over red states. As w- Do you think Georgia and Florida are blue states? And Nebraska? Wow, you're, you're, you're a s- smart one. Anyway, this sets a precedent. Yes, the entire South is super duper blue. Super duper blue. Ah, there we go. Louisiana, Georgia, Florida. Let's see. Fredericksburg. Oh, let's see. Fucking, that's Canada. Ah, uh, fucking do 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 do. Ah, uh, let's see. That is Macon County. I always forget where they are. Georgia as well. Um. Anyway, all right. Let me drop my list. <laughs> so. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with troll based on the fact that he's got to follow to, um, Scott, Scott teaches his people, the people that listen to him, how to argue in bad faith. So it doesn't surprise me that he's arguing in bad faith. (laughs) Anyway, so federal jury, uh, federal jury has just created case, uh, created a precedent for in fact, Finding that the outcome of the 2020 protest, uh, 2020 protests was a series of excessive force escalation incidents on the part of police departments nationwide. Um, there are multiple law professors that have spoken about this one. The professor, uh, professor of law at University of Michigan, uh, uh, Michael Steinberg, um, he's the director of civil rights uh, litigation initiative. He, um, yeah, plus the screen name gives it away. Um, he, he has straight said that it, it g- would give cities incentive to settle similar cases rather than list, risk going to trial and losing at this point. He, you know, yeah. Quote, there's no doubt that the large jury verdict in Denver will influence the outcome of pending police misconduct cases brought by B- Black Lives Matter protests across the country. Um, he has law students of his own that are working on a variety of these cases as well. Um, so, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Um, oops, there you go. Aren't these two happy looking men? Oh, I think imaginary points me, Ted. Um, so
I told you he was, I told you he was a problem. I fucking told you he was a problem. <laughs> I fucking, anyway. So. Yes. So who are these gentlemen? Who are these fine, clean cut, upstanding citizens of our fine nation? Yes, the pinnacle of the master race. Yes, 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 yes. So, what you have is on the left, you have a gentleman by the name of Brent Getz. He was uh, <clears throat> known as police chief Brent Getz. Yes, he was a chief of police for a relatively small, uh, small town. The gentleman on the right would be his co-defendant, uh, uh, an uh, a upstanding individual by the name of Gregory Wagner. Um, he testi- he pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Mr. Getz here on the left. They will both be sentenced at a later date, but um, the former chief of police and his friend here, well... How do I put this? Um, They raped a six-year-old for about a decade. I shoot them, stock market. I shoot them. Um, Yeah, if somebody breaks into my house, that's a violation of my safety. I put them down. I shoot to incapacitate until I no longer feel threatened. That's the answer. Um, when seconds matter, police are minutes away. With what? He doesn't know who I am. That's hilarious. Anyway, so I'm going to stop talking to the idiot at this point. <clears throat> With what? <laughs> You're adorable. Uh, yes, these two individuals, the uh, chief of police there on the left... And his best buddy rape, started raping a girl um, at the age of six and continued raping her for a decade. Maybe they were some of the good ones. Are those are those the good ac- apples? Is that is that the good apples that we're we're supposed to be keeping an eye out for? Anyway, <laughs> homie, you don't know them like I know them. Let's just put it that way. You don't. It's okay, though. Not everybody grows up with a stepfather who is a federal uh, federal firearms dealer who grew up with what would then become the regional director of the uh, BATFE, right? Not everybody's had tours of the ATF lockups. Not everybody's pa- uh, parents owned multiple firearms training facilities. Not everybody's par- uh, mother was tapped for the Olympic shooting team. Not everybody grew up teaching firearms classes. Not everybody grew up training with, uh, with military individuals. Not everybody grew up going to front site and learning from like Ignatius Piazza, right? Not everybody has that experience. I understand that, but I did. <laughs> Homie. My firearms experience is ridiculous. I grew up with a degree in access to firearms that most people can't even begin to comprehend. And I still continue to have it. The, the familial collection is massive. So, yeah. What would I use? Any of a plethora. My personal preference is a SIG 226. P226 technically with an uh, with a double stack extended magazine. And I prefer the rubber grips to the uh, the plastic grips that come on it, but that's neither here nor there. I really like my Mossberg shotgun, frankly, um, for home defense. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Even Marx was in favor of firearms ownership, 
Any attempt to uh, surrender f- uh, amu- uh, firearms or ammunition should be frustrated by force if necessary. Right? That's Karl Marx, man. Anarchists are fucking have never been about gun control. Not once have we ever been on the side of gun control. <laughs> so, homie, you're in the wrong room. You don't even know what the fuck you're doing. You don't know where you are. You don't know what you're talking about. And just because you have a little bit of land, and by the way, it is a little bit of land. I grew up with a mountain as my property and own many acres elsewhere. Right? Like, you're not, homie, you don't, I don't want a dick measure with you. I don't want a dick measure with you. But the fact of the matter is, if you want to whip out your dick and put it on the table when it comes to firearms, homie. I'm fucking porn star up here and you're just some, well, Donald Trump ding dong fucking mush toad from fucking, uh, fucking super Mario brothers looking motherfucker. All right. Don't, I don't want to do this to you. I don't want to do this to you, but you want to do this. So let's do this. (sighs) He is glazy. He is. Yeah, whether an AK-47 is essentially the easiest platform. It's the easiest platform. You can teach a 12-year-old to field strip that, clean it, and reassemble it probably within an hour. It's an astounding platform. Super simple. You can stamp the parts, um, meaning you just cut them out with a a metal stamp. It's ridiculous. Yeah, an AK is probably your most reliable and easiest to produce platform. 100%. So... While we're on this, while we're on this topic, I have a story. The three-judge panel, oh, did he go silent now? Hmm, Interesting. Um, How many did he say I want to dick measure? Um, uh, The three-judge panel that makes up the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has published an opinion in the, oh, you timed him out? Oh, I wanted him. I wanted to fucking, I, I wanted to play with him more. Oh, I'm going to untime him out and I'll get you your fucking points back. I wanted to play with him. I was right in the middle of smacking him down and you fucking took my play toy away. There you go. So I'll get you your points back. Anyway, the three judge panel um, for the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals published an opinion in the case of Nibs versus Momfart. You do realize that was a community fucking one stock market. By the way, stock market, address what I said to you. You know what? Stock market, come on the air. Anyway, they published an opinion in the case of Nibs versus Momfard. Now, why is the, the case of Nibs versus Momfard so important? What does that have to do with firearm ownership even? What is this apropos of, Kai? Because you were alluding to some level of connectivity between these statements. Well, they found for the estate of Nibs, which was suing Deputy Momford of the Macon County Sheriff's Department. Here's what happened. Here is the long and short of it. Here's the the opinion as published by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. The mere possession of a firearm by a homeowner is not sufficient to justify the use of deadly force by officers. Let me repeat that, Americans. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has, has rendered an opinion that states... The mere possession of a firearm by a homeowner is not sufficient to justify use of deadly force by officers. Second, there is a right to come to the door with a firearm. Third, 
officers must identify themselves as officers to qualify for qualified immunity. No knock warrants. Four, mere verbal announcements without visual confirmation is not sufficient to identify oneself. So just because an officer comes to your door and, ne- and bangs on the door and says, police, open up, doesn't mean they have sufficiently identified themselves. And if you open the door to gain visual identification, holding a firearm at the ready, that is not just cause for them. Five, sufficient precedent exists for officers to be aware of their duty in these situations. These five points in this opinion are kind of ground changing. This is kind of landscape shifting in a way. This is the fourth circuit straight up saying that, yep, mere possession of a firearm isn't justification for deadly force by officers. You have a right to come to your door armed. They must identify themselves and vo- vocal identification alone is not, uh, does not rise to the, uh, to the legal merit of identifying yourself as an officer and qualified immunity does not come into play because sufficient precedent exists for them to be aware because qualified immunity as we've covered before hinges upon these stupid fucking clauses about whether a uh, pr- sufficient precedent exists in the violation of a civil rights infraction etc cetera, etc cetera, right they have ruled that sufficient precedent exists so this is a big fucking deal as far as rulings go it's a big fucking deal as far as rulings go in this country this one's going to find its way to the supreme court this one's, this one's going to find its way to the Supreme Court. Count on that. Look for Nibs ver, uh, versus Momford in a few years in the Supreme Court. That's making its way. There's no fucking way this doesn't make its way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, Rev, a lot of states do. <coughs> this kind of thing could prevent a future Breonna Taylor? Yeah, it can. Oh, yeah, cops. The entire legal establishment is going to fight this. Yes, he ran away as soon as I asked him to come on air, I believe. He, he hasn't said shit, so, you know, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> here's the NYPD van that slammed into a homeless man who was begging for change on a Brooklyn street Thursday night last week, of course, because we do the following week or the previous week. This is, this is, this is the, um, the gruesome part. Um, they hit him and then drug him an additional 35 feet before they, stopped so yeah yeah glazy because our news cycle is fucked you know that it's it's our news cycle is fucked um and you know bigger stories right man bigger stories there's glitzier stories. Fucking Ukraine and fucking Biden and Fox News and Donald Trump and all that other shit. Right? <clears throat> fucking the media sucks. The news cycle sucks. The country sucks. Right? Um, Are they playing the victim now? Of course they are. Yeah. They struck him at pretty pretty fast speed. He's he's dead by the way. The the homeless man died. 
Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, Axel. I mean, there's an argument to be made there as well. We covered last week when they were in Williamsboro. Uh, Williamsburg, sorry. Williamsburg uh, cleaning up the homeless encampment under the uh, Williamsburg Bridge. Um, and it was 10... It was 10 degrees out when they were doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Exxon was saying, in my opinion, the reason why this isn't reported is because of the mayor doing anti-homeless and pro-cop stuff and his financial backers is in good control over the media. Um, they probably still charged him. Um, no, Glazy. No, not at all. No, no. That was somebody else a long time ago. No. <laughs> no, not what's, what's a, No. Um, Carpe, they probably still charged him with damaging the van. Dude, they probably handcuffed him. They probably fucking handcuffed him. I'm not kidding you. That's the shit cops do. They do it all the time. They're absolute garbage human beings. Um, oh, just fuck PD. That's just, you know, f f drop the NY and just fuck PD. <laughs> That's, yeah. Um, let's go to Toronto. Um, I, don't have a, I don't have a picture. Sorry. I don't have a picture. Um... Hey, it's been a while since I played this one. Um, hold on. Where is it? Jesus Christ. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Um, man knew what he was saying. Narrator. Oh, no. Not near me. Yeah. Um, a Brampton teenager um, who was an aspiring rapper, a young black man, um, was fucking uh confronted by the special investigations unit of the toronto police department over wait for it wait for it wait for it the alleged sale of counterfeit watches oh interesting the police were protecting the interests of the capitalist class i'm shocked I really am. I'm shocked, guys. The police. Did you know? Did you know, guys? The police occasionally protect the interests of the capitalist class. This was a new one on me, so I, I was, I was shocked to hear this. Mm, yes. Anyway, um, the Brampton teenager was pursued and tackled to the ground. Um, over the alleged sale of counterfeit watches. And then of course, you know, given a little <clears throat> roughing up, shall we say, um, the police of course wouldn't release any footage or his name or any of that sort of stuff. Um, but the kid's dead. All right, dig, take care of yourself. Good luck on your side of town. I just thought they didn't solve murders. Murders. Oh, Ducky. No, Ducky. Um, they also don't solve rapes as well. Um, so we don't know. I, I, I will. I will literally lead you the quote. It remains unclear what actually caused his death, but the officers involved are facing disciplinary charges for of uh, uh, for uh, for failing to notify police about their use of force and failing to document their interaction with him. So the police had a violent interaction with a young man who was potentially selling counterfeit watches, and then he turns up dead, and none of their paperwork ever says anything about interacting with him whatsoever. I mean, maybe they didn't have anything to do with it. Maybe they're perfectly innocent. Maybe they just, you know, roughed him up a little bit and let him go and some other incident occurred. But covering up your tracks like that and then the kid turning up dead a couple hours later doesn't, um, it doesn't inspire confidence in your story. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, yeah, we don't know yet. Get on the air. I've already talked about a bunch of red states, dummy. We went through a whole bunch of southern states. We went through Arizona. We went through fucking Georgia. We went through Tennessee. We went through Louisiana. We went through fucking, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. We've been all over this fucking country in this session. We've been going for two and a half. We've been going for two hours now. 
doing police stories. Get on the air. I'll have the fucking conversation with you. Otherwise, you know, stop being a cowardly little bitch. Oh, here's another fucking, let's do another Louisiana story. Fucking, oh, let's see a deputy shooting. Oh, that's always great. Oh, that's, that's fun. This is fun. Um, for those keeping track of what you can um, get shot for, um, like, you know, driving while black, walking while black, standing while black, drinking iced tea while black, studying while black. Um, let's do Louisiana, right? Um, this is an interesting way to get shot. Um, 19 year old dr uh, driver and a 20 year old passenger. The vehicle was found off uh, in a marsh, partially submerged all over Delta, all over. Um, it was the vehicle. Um, <clears throat> 911 call came in reporting that a vehicle had run off the highway and was partially submerged. The deputies found the vehicle in the marsh off the Interstate 10 off ramp from U.S. Highway 51, partially submerged. During the encounter, the police, sh this is quote, quote, during an encounter with the two occupants, a deputy shot Williams once, the state police said without elaborating. It is an active, in is Louisiana not a red state? Is Louisiana? Never mind. I'm I'm done interacting with that. Praxis is theory put into action and then refined upon. What ex what do you want as my praxis? What statement? We'll deal with it in a second. No one time him out. Anyway, let me wrap up a few of these and then we'll we'll get to dealing with people anyway so if you're wondering another interesting way to get um to get yourself shot while being a uh, tenuous strenuous uh, even you know tenuously brown um that's that's great so you know drowning in your own car after it's left the highway in a car accident Let me point out something. I'm in the middle of a fucking segment. Thank, please and thank you. I'm trying to get through a bunch of stories. Thank you. Trying to actually do some fucking coverage here and get a fucking segment done. And I've got multiple people over here that don't understand what we're attempting to do right now. I'm in the middle of a segment we do repeatedly called Popo's Bizarre Adventures where I document and track the malfeasances of, uh, malfeasances of police, mostly in the American nation, but also abroad. And I've got four more fucking tabs to get through. And then we can do some other stuff. Please and thank you. So anyway, those keeping track and adding to the tally list of ways to get yourself shot by the police, drowning in your own car, add that to the list. That would be Louisiana, the notoriously deep blue state of Louisiana, according to one of our brilliant participants in chat. Um, anyway, Amir Locke. Yes, Glazy, he called Louisiana blue. He also called, I believe, Arkansas, um, uh, Georgia. Um, he called a bunch of states, it was southern states blue. Yes, yes, he's he's a brilliant individual. Um yeah. So anyway, Amir Locke, <clears throat> the uh, early morning no knock warrant um, where they broke into um, his cousin's apartment where he was staying uh, without knocking, without fucking identifying themselves as a part of an investigation into a homicide in a neighboring city. Um, there will be no charges filed. There will be no charges filed. Um, this ruling, this decision, 
comes on the heels of that Fourth Circuit Court decision. So moving forward, we may actually find that these sorts of decisions get a little um, by maniac to care. These sorts of decisions may get challenged under that uh, that uh, that uh, precedent. So that's definitely going to be a fascinating thing moving forward. I expected this. I expect this always, frankly. Um, do I have that picture? Yes, I do. Um, and if you guys remember, um, Glazy, you're a northerner. Um, the Buffalo, New York police officers who um, shoved the uh, old man to the ground while they were out doing their jackbooted thuggery and cracked his skull on the ground. <clears throat> well, the arbitrator ruled that the two police officers didn't violate the department's use of force guidelines. Um, quote, uh, well, first the police tried to claim he um, tripped and injured himself. They first tried to lie, as all police try to lie. Um, they tried to lie and cover their tracks, but when it came, when the footage of them knocking him over and cracking his skull on the fucking ground like that came out and they couldn't lie about it anymore... Um, what happened is the, uh, it went to arbitration and the arbiter decided, uh, his name is Jeffrey, uh, Selchik, by the way, that's the arbiter. His name is fully published in international media. He wrote, quote, upon review, there is no evidence to sustain any claim that respondents, the police officers had any other viable options other than to move Gugino out of the way of their forward movement. They had no other option than to shove the 75-year-old man to the ground, cracking his skull on the concrete. No other option, guys. None. They could not move to the left. They could not step around him in any way, shape, or form. They had to shove him to the ground. That's the only option they had. So if you want to add to the list of people who are also considered cops within the ACAB umbrella, any arbitra uh, arbiter that works within the department, yeah. <clears throat> and here's another fun one. Here's Frederick, Fredericksburg, Washington. They couldn't shove the public art installation. They had to shove something to carpe. So this is the body camera uh, footage from an officer, Sean Jurgens. Get out of the car or I'm going to fucking smoke you. That's the point. Get I'll, out. I'll point out Don't what needs pointed out when this is done. Trinity player is activated. Now. 
Uh, just so everybody knows, this is also happening. Um, yeah, yeah, Glaze, I'll get you the link. Just so you know, this uh, this is happening in a very infamously deep blue state, um, Virginia. Virginia, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, de- notoriously deep blue state, by the way. Um, that's definitely what's going on. Oh, did the little fucking punk bitch leave? He fucking left. Of course he left. Um, yes. Oh my god, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! It's on his foot. Now they're running him over with his car. His foot's on Yeah, you're good. Stop it. Right, we're gonna help you out, bud, okay? okay please, please. So what happened? Well, the city of Fredericksburg, Virginia, is paying this man five million dollars. That's what's happening. He was having a stroke. Yes. Caboose is right. He was having a stroke. That man was having a stroke. He was literally sitting in traffic and began having a stroke. And the cops rolled up and fucking tased him, pepper sprayed him, and then ran him over with his own fucking car. Not the first stroke victim we've covered this year either, by the way. Not the first stroke victim we've covered this year, by the way. That's the second stroke victim we've covered this year. Where somebody was having a stroke in traffic and the cops fucking arrested him. So, you know. That. So the, um, the case just was awarded $5 million. Yeah. Of taxpayer money, as always. Not coming out of the police benevolent fund. Not coming out of their pensions. It's not coming out of their budget. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's what we're dealing with. So, Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone. <laughs>